This song is called Life's Railway to Heaven. Life is like a mountain railway with an engineer that's brave. We must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curves, the hills, the tunnels, never potter, never pale. Keep your hand upon the throttle and your eye upon the rail. Blessed Savior, thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore. Where the angels wait to join us on that great forevermore. You will roll up grades of trials. You will cross the bridge of strife. See that Christ is your conductor on oh, this lightning train of life. <laughs> Always smile mm -mm. Uh, through the obstructions. Do your duty, never fail. Keep your head upon that throttle and your eye upon the rail. Our blessed Jesus, thou will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us on that great forevermore. My Lord. As you roll across the trestle, spanning Jordan, swelling tide, Ooh, praise God, you'll behold the Union Depot, uh, into which your train will glide. There you'll meet the superintendent. God the Father, God the Son, with a hearty welcome, stranger. Weary pilgrim, welcome home. Welcome in, weary pilgrim. Blessed <laughs> uh, Savior, thou will guide us till we reach that bliss. Before, where the angels wait to join us in that great forevermore. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Just give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Oh, yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me, I pray. Show me the way one day at a time. Do you remember when you walked among men? Well, Jesus, you know, if you're looking below, it's worse now than then, a pushing and shoving. Oh, it's crowding up my mind. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. Oh, Lord, me, help me to take one day at a time. Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. Oh, praise the Lord for one day at a time that we learn how to live in it. If we could just control uh, 
the time of that clock moving so fast. But we can take one day at a time. We can certainly do that. Break it down into pieces and take it one take it one hour at a time, one minute at a time. And bless God, that joy can flood our soul if we do that. Oh, my goodness. Some joy can be. You get that joy in one minute, and you add two, three, four, and you get up to an hour of joy. Mm, my Lord. Woo! Living in that one day at a time. I praise the Lord for that. I wondered so aimless, life filled with sin. Oh, I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Oh, and then Jesus came like stranger in the night and praise the Lord. <laughs> I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more in night. Oh, I, I, now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Whoa, just like a blind man, I wondered along. Worries and fears I claim for my own. Then like the blind man, God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night, oh, now I have traded the wrong for the right, and praise the Lord, I saw the light, I was a fool to wonder and stray, for for straight is the gate and narrow the way. Now I have traveled, I've traded the wrong for the right. So praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. I have traded the wrong for the right, and now I'm so happy, and all his love's within. So praise the Lord, I saw the light. I like that one better about the being happy. He said, um, I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. I wondered so aimless, life filled with sin, I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night, and praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. So praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Uh, I have, uh, this one's called uh, Joy and Speakable. I have found the joy no tongue can tell how the waves of glory roll. It is like a great or flowing well springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. All the half has never yet been told. I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need as i sit and learn at jesus feet i am free as free indeed oh it is joy unspeakable and full of glory 
full of glory, full of glory. What's joy unspeakable and full of glory? Oh, the half has never yet been told. Uh, I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. Oh, what a wondrous blessing. I am safe from the awful gulf of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of Glory all the hand has never yet been told. I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near. I can see his Save me, it's smiling face, and it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the hat has never yet been told. Oh, yes, I have found the joy of no tongue can tell how the waves of glory roll. It is like a great or flowing well springing up within my soul. Oh, it is joy unspeakable, full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. Glory in his joy, unspeakable and full of glory. All the hat has never yet been told. Oh, ah, praise the Lord. Woo, my Lord is all in my soul. Yes, springing up within my soul. It's joy unspeakable, joy unspeakable, springing up within my soul. The joy. My Lord, all these songs tell about the joy. My Lord, I, woo! <laughs> oh, yes, we got those in the sea. <laughs> My Lord, uh, uncloudy day. It's time to sing the uncloudy day. <laughs> woo! Oh, they tell me of a home. Far beyond the skies, oh, they tell me of a, a land far away, where the storm, oh, they, wait a minute, just, oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies, oh, they tell me of a home far away, oh, they tell me of a home where those star, storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, the land of cloudless sky. Oh, the land of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a land where my friends have gone. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. See now, this one's a... Oh, they tell me. Oh, they tell me. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Lord of cloudless day. Oh, they tell me the sea. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Oh, they tell me of a land where my friends have gone. And they tell me of a, that land far away where a tree of life in eternal bloom sheds its fragrance on the uncloudy day. Oh, the land of cloudless sky. Oh, the land of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Ooh, praise the Lord. Oh, yes. And then, oh, they tell me of a king and his beauty there. 
and they tell me that mine eyes shall be whole where he sits on the throne that is whiter than snow in that city that is made of gold oh they tell me of a land far away oh they tell me of a oh i'm getting tired i guess i can't remember them oh they tell me of a land far oh they Oh, the land of cloudless sky. Oh, the land of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, yes. Oh, praise God. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, then we have a... Um, oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there. And his smile drives the sorrows all away. And they tell me that he will, eh, no tears will ever come again. And that heavenly land of uncloudy day. Oh, the land of cloudless sky. Oh, the land of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an uncloudy sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, yes, if I just put that sheet down and trust my memory, I was getting it, all right. Oh, they tell me of a land far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a land far away. Oh, they tell me of a land of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of it. All right, one more time. Oh, oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an uncloudy sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Well, where's the skies in it? Oh, oh, they tell me. Of an uncloudy day. Oh, the land of cloudless day. Oh, the land of an uncloudy sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. Oh, the land of cloudless sky. Oh, the land of an uncloudy day. Oh, they tell me of a land where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an uncloudy day. My Lord, praise God, praise God, praise God. Get that one memorized. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the rest will shine, I want a gold one that's silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we will never grow old. And someday yonder, we will never more wander, but walk on streets that are purest gold. There will be a happy meeting in heaven, I know, when with all the many loved ones and those known below, gathered on the the hills of glory with hearts all aglow. That will be a glad reunion day. Glad day, oh glorious day. Glad day, oh wonderful day. 
there with all the happy angels and loved ones to stay. That will be a glad reunion day. There within the holy city we'll sing and rejoice. Praising Christ the Savior with song and with voice. This with Oh, uh, let's see. That te and uh, tell him how, how we came to love him and make him our uh, own. Uh, and we'll tell him, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, there, there within the holy city, we'll sing and rejoice. Praising Christ Jesus. Blessed Savior, with song and with voice, telling him how we came to make him our choice. And uh, telling him uh, how we came to love him and make him our choice. That will be a glad reunion day. There within the holy city we'll sing and rejoice. Praising Christ the blessed Savior with uh, song and with voice. Telling him how we came to love him and make him our choice. That will be a glad reunion day. Glad day, oh glorious day. Glad day, oh glorious day, there with all the mighty angels and loved ones to stay. That will be a glad reunion day. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, one of these times I'm going to come on here and I'm going to have it with those songs all memorized. And uh, we'll have to have song sheets or anything. You watch and see. And so, <laughs> but, uh, Anyway, so on this song that we started out with, Life's Railway of Heaven, it's uh, the mountain, it says, Life is like a mountain railroad with an engineer that's brave. And so, of course, the engineer is us. You know, that has to be us because it starts telling us, starts saying we must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. And then it talks about the curves uh, and the hills and, and uh, never falter, never fail. Keep your eyes upon the, your hand upon the throttle and your eyes upon the, the rail. So then uh, we are uh, we are the engineer of the train and we're going down through the rails in the mountain of life. And so we must be brave. And so it's just telling us, it's telling us that we must be brave. My Lord. And, uh, we must face all of our trials and everything. In a brave way, and uh, just with faith, you know, have faith, be brave, have faith. We must make the run successful. But then, as we are exercising the faith, then we had to make sure and, you know, utilize the faith to uh, gain the wisdom and the understanding and the love and all the rest of it to begin to be able to make the life's, life's run successful. You know, all the way from the cradle to the grave, we and we be able to then we're able to truly uh, be able to watch all those curves and all those um, uh, tunnels and all that kind of thing uh, with our eyes on Jesus and His faith and uh, faith in Him to guide us. And so then it says, uh, "With the blessed Sa Savior, blessed Savior, Thou wilt guide us." Till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to God to join us in that bliss forevermore with the blessed Savior. Blessed Savior, thou wilt guide us. And so with the guidance of Jesus, we're able to navigate all of those curves and those hills and those tunnels and all the rest of it. 
with faith and with our eyes on Jesus, then we can make that run successful. And so basically that's what I see in this song. Uh, it never was exactly the type of uh, metaphor or whatever that appeals to me the most, but it that's basically what it's, what it's saying. Uh, and then it says, uh, Blessed Savior, Thou wilt guide us till we reach that blissful shore. You know, we'll one day reach that blissful shore where we'll be there with all the holy angels and everything and be in a perfected body and everything. And then the guidance will no longer be necessary. And all we'll, and our praying for wisdom will no longer be necessary because we'll be there in that glorified body and on that blissful shore where we'll be there in the presence of all of that love and joy and peace and with running the place, looking at Jesus in the face and everything and all of that. And so we'll no longer have to have that. But until we reach that blissful shore, then uh, then the, our blessed Savior has to guide us until we're there with the uh, where the angels wait to join us in that great forevermore. And then it says, "You will roll up grades of trials." You know. Uh, as we begin to try our faith, trials are going to stay in our way. Trials are going to try to oppose our faith. Hurdles that weren't there before will start putting themselves up when we start exercising our faith and we start trying to actually do something. And the more we do, the more trials. And, uh, uh, you know, if we're, if we're not, if we don't have trials and the devil's not after us, then we're not doing anything as, as I've always heard that, uh, from my uh, forebears and everything, and uh, they said, if the devil's not after you, not doing anything. <laughs> uh, and so uh, uh, you will uh, <laughs> cross the bridge of strife. So you know, it's just warning you that there's going to be trials and strife. But but with the faith, with the faith in your eyes on Jesus, and you know, and doing your best to keep your eyes on the. Uh, uh, on the rails and your hand on the throttle, you'll make it fine, you know. And so we'll get there and we'll see Christ um, is your making sure Christ is our conductor on this lightning train of life. You know, the train's going by fast, you know, and so it's going through all this. And so we got to make our decisions quick and we got to have Christ as the conductor in order to make everything run smooth and make all the decisions wise and all like that, depending upon him to give us the wisdom that we need at the time we need it because the train is moving fast and it's going to be, it's going to have to meet the schedule. It's going to be there pretty soon at the train station and everything. Everything's going to have to roll in right and correct and everything. And it's just going by fast like a lightning. Our life is passing before us. And uh, it says always, Smile through the obstructions. You know, um, if things get in your way, just know, like I say, that just means that you're doing something and the devil's trying to obstruct it. And so you just smile and say, well, you know, you may be trying to obstruct it, but I've got Jesus. And if God be for us, nothing can be against us. No, that weapon shall be formed. That formed against us shall prosper. And Jesus was in the greater is in me. Uh, and then it, he, he is in me that's in, that in the world. And so from that, we can smile and go right through those obstructions. So do your duty, never fail. Keep your hand upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rail. As you roll across the trestle, spanning Jordan's swelling tide, you know, crossing Jordan. You know, which is representative of crossing, you know, uh, in the transition into the uh, into the eternal life, into the uh, into from this life into the next life. And you'll behold, uh, let's see, as you uh, cross the trestle, as you roll across the trestle, spanning Jordan's swelling tide. You'll behold the Union Depot. Well, you know, that's where, you know, you're crossing Jordan and you're beholding heaven, beholding the Union Depot into which you'll glide. That way you'll, you've done all these things before. You're going to glide into heaven <laughs> and into which your train will glide. And there you'll meet the superintendent 
which is God the Father. <laughs> this is starting to make kind of make sense. <laughs> I always heard it before, and the only thing I would remember would be just something about uh, about somebody, an engineer in a train, and then I'd remember that course, uh, which is a marvelous, marvelous course. Blessed Savior, that will guide us until we can reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to meet us on that great forevermore. <laughs> but he says, yeah, it's starting to make sense. There you'll meet the superintendent, God the Father, God the Son, and then with a hearty welcome stranger. <laughs> Uh, but if you got that white robe on, as I say, it will, you won't be a stranger. You know, you'll be welcome. He is you because you come with that precious, uh, pure robe of washed in the blood of Jesus. Uh, but, uh, you know, welcome stranger. You know, that's why I put it in quotation marks. That, that's not necessarily means you're a stranger. That just means, you know, welcome, you know, <laughs> good to see you. That, and, and so, uh, a uh, weary pilgrim, welcome home. Uh, of course, uh, <laughs> and then and then as we go through all of that, <laughs> those troubles and trials, and we've gone through uh, engineering a train and going up hills and mountains and trestles and <laughs> trials and all that business, <laughs> up and down and through and. <laughs> And uh, been on that noisy train, all that business, you know. And then we, then we start singing one day at a time. <laughs> I think I'll just take it one day at a time. Woo! One day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking, you know. So um, <laughs> don't tell me about all those trials that's going to come and all of those. Uh, 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 all of those uh, hurdles and all the rest of it, and all those tunnels and all those curves and all those mountains and all those <laughs> and different things. Uh, just let me live one day at a time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. <laughs> just give me the strength <laughs> to do every day what I have to do. Oh, oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, give me the strength to do every day uh, what I have to do. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> the longer you live, the more sense that song makes, too. Uh, yesterday's gone. It's gone. <laughs> oh, 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 goodness gracious. Yesterday, yesterday's already about gone. All right. Seems like I just got up. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. Tomorrow may never be mine. Oh, my. <laughs> Lord, help me. Today, show me the way, one day at a time. Now, that all makes sense. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mm -mm. Show me the way, one day at a time. Oh, yes. Um, do you remember, and of course, certainly he does, but, the, you know, this is a rhetorical question. I mean, it's just like a something to uh, introduce a question uh, or introduce a statement. When, do you remember when... You walked among men, my precious Jesus, when you walked among us. Uh, well, Jesus, you know, you know, you know, since you're looking below, it's worse now than then. You know, in many ways it is, and other ways maybe not, but many ways. And there's pushing and shoving, and it's beginning to work on me <laughs> and give me stress and strain. It's crowding my mind, trying to figure it all out and trying to worry about it all, you know, and, and uh, all the fears, anxieties, and worries about the future and all this kind of thing beginning to crowd my mind. He said, so then I'm just going to turn it over to you. I'm going to go to you and I'm going to pray and I'm going to say, for my sake, Lord, just teach me to take one day at a time and don't worry about all those things. Don't worry about what's going to happen. You know, just worry about getting through the day. Do your best. Right in the corner. I'd meant to sing that song one sometime before. Now, uh, right in the corner where you are. And so, uh, just worry about brightening the corner where you are. And um, so, Lord, help me today. Show me the way one day at a time. My, my, my. Mm -mm -mm. And then he says, uh, okay, then we're going into the song called I Saw the Light. Oh, yes. Whoa. Thank <laughs> you.
That was what was wrong. I was out of my hot chocolate. <laughs> Y'all know I can't operate without my hot chocolate. You see, I don't need Google. My father knows. My father knows everything. <laughs> that's my hot chocolate. That's my hot chocolate. I don't. I don't need Google. My father, you know, Father in heaven knows everything. <laughs> and so I had to go refill my uh, my mug with hot chocolate because I cannot sing without my hot chocolate. So that's what was wrong. And uh, <laughs> oh yes, my goodness. Uh, but. Uh, we, but I saw the, I saw the light and, and I paused it and went and got my hot chocolate. May praise the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I wondered, but uh, uh, in uh, <laughs> this one, I saw the light. It says, "I wondered so aimless, life filled with sin. I uh, wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Mm -mm -mm. Sound like a simple song, but it has meaning. It has quite a bit of meaning. I mean, it does make the point when you really stop and think about it. You know, if you just kind of let the words go by, you know, it just kind of sounds kind of simple. But, uh, you know, other than just I saw the light. But when you really look at it, it does have a real meaning to it. It's, uh, I, w I wondered so aimless, life filled with sin and wouldn't let, you know, when, so since my life was filled with sin, I wouldn't let the dear, the dear Savior in. And But then, all of a sudden, you know, he says, um, at night I was thinking over my life, you know, and all the kind of different troubles I've been in and everything, and what world could have went wrong that I ended up with so much problems and so much trouble and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, the light come to him. Uh, it dawned upon him, and uh, he started thinking over, I guess he started thinking over songs or, or scripture verses or something. And then... The truth came to him like a stranger in the night. You know, Jesus came to him. You know, Jesus could have, I mean, he could have appeared there. An angel could have appeared there. The truth could have just hit his mind, his brain uh, all of a sudden. But the, the uh, uh, Jesus came to him in one part or the other there at his bed that night. And all of a sudden, he said, I saw the light. He said, praise the Lord, I saw the light. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, it's about time you saw the light. You know? <laughs> I've been telling you that you need to see the light. <laughs> you know. Uh, and so uh, he said, um, uh, and now and then he says, no more in darkness. You know, boy, I mean, tell you, it can happen quick. You know, you can see that light, you know, of, of what all is causing your troubles and your problems and and all of a sudden and then you're no more you're not no more operating in darkness you know just like that veil is in that song that comes down from your face when you start really thinking about jesus and and what he did did for you and how he died for you and everything you know perhaps thinking back at a verse you heard a long time ago like for god so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life and you think about that and you all of a sudden, you know, it's like a stranger in the night comes to your mind. Oh, that's what that means, you know. That's what that means. That God so loved the world and that love that was demonstrated. You know, he didn't just say, I love the world, you know, but he actually demonstrated the fact that he did by actually doing something by sending his son to this world, you know, to... Uh, uh, be among us and learn from us and heal people and, and uh, bring the salvation message and the gospel and all that. And then finally die upon the cross and then be resurrected again. And so he did something about his love. And so that dawns so on you. You see the light, how, uh, what all God has done to prove his love to us and how much he loves us. And so you know that. And he said, no more darkness, no more night. Now I am so happy. There's no more sorrows in sight, <laughs> praise the Lord, I saw the light. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, and then he says, um, just like a blind man, I wandered along wearies and fears. You know, I just wandered along and all these wearies and fears. 
uh, were just all, you know, it was either that just was his life, you know. All of his worries and his fears on his mind was just his constant companion, and that was his companion. That was his fellowship. He went along a fellowship, and you know, you you may have been there a day or two or something. You go along, and and uh, your whole mind is just filled with all your worries and your fears and your anxieties and all like that, you know. And that's just like a, a constant companion that is there with you, and you're fellowshipping with all those fears and worries instead of with Jesus. And all of a sudden, you got to stop and say. Well, I'm going to see the light start fellowshipping with Jesus, and then, and I'm going to start uh, uh, shouting out all those doubts and fears and praising God till all those fears are gone. You know, get, I'll get the joy that pushes out all those doubts and fears, and I'm going to start uh, constantly uh, having fellowship with Jesus and until all those worries and fears are gone. And then, then, then things start turning around. It's then like a blind man that God gave back his sight praise the lord i saw the light i was a fool to wander and stray <clears throat> for straight is the gate and narrows the way you know you're a fool for thinking that, that the, because the majority of people believe a certain thing that that necessarily makes it right or a majority of people are doing a certain type of thing or going a certain type of direction or you know uh, engaging in certain type of sins and and uh, and uh, unscrupulous behavior, they be just because a uh, uh, majority of people are doing that, is that makes that means it's right, and that means that you won't still end up in in trouble, and, you know, and you may end up in more trouble than the rest of them, you know, and so uh, we uh, that that becomes a matter of a foolish thing to do to real to realize that to begin to. Uh, to make that mistake of thinking because the majority are doing something that necessarily makes it right, and that necessarily means it's going to turn out right. And so, uh, said, so now I have traded that wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Uh, no more in darkness, no in that. Okay, so he saw the light, and so I think we got the gist of that. Um, and so, and we said, okay, okay, oh, I have. Joy unspeakable that I found his grace is all complete. He supplies every need. Woo! His grace is all complete and able to supply every need. Every need that we have. Oh, yes. I'll, um, there's a song called um, I'll Live for Jesus and Let the World Go By. Because my every need he will supply. And so, I'll, I'll work for Jesus and let the world go by. My every need he will supply. I'll work for Jesus and let the world go by. My every need he will supply. And so, it, and, uh, so he said, as I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. I have, I have found the, uh, the. Oh yeah, he's free and free indeed. While he's learning from Jesus, you know that the words of Jesus, uh, uh, he, he, like they said, his words are, are his words are joy, and his words are life. His words, his words are eternal. His words are the bread of life, the water of life, and all those things. They are, um, what does the verse say? They are, they are healing and they are life, or something like that. But it ends with life. And um, so he says, I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. So now you've traded the play, that pleasure that you once craved. Uh, well, you know, he's using the word pleasure in the sense of, you know, craving, uh, craving to have your um, inward struggle settled and, and uh, a, cra a craving to have that void feel and a craving to have um, the, um, what is that word that we've been singing in the songs uh, about uh, 
the um, that all-consuming feeling that something needs more needs to be added uh, within and within to your soul that vacuum in your soul that uh, that feeling of uh, that feeling of emptiness in your soul and so the, the, he has found what would fill that and he's found then the pleasure that he he once craved he craved some kind of pleasure some kind of pleasure, some kind of feeling, some either pleasure or feeling of, of some kind that would fill that inward, that inward craving. And so, but then, so he found, uh, he has found that, and they, he realized that that is now become joy, and now he has joy and peace within. You know, what a uh, wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. Mm -mm -mm. Um, and so, and then I have found that hope so bright and clear living in the realm of grace. You know, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, and the good works which he had before, and it which walk in it. By grace are you saved <coughs> through faith, uh, the uh, living then, and then we, and when we enter into that, we're living in the realm of grace. Uh, where we're saved by God's grace and he leads us by his grace. He gives us wisdom by his grace. He gives us everything we need by his grace. He supplies our every need by his grace and we're living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near. I can see his smiling face. You know, the Savior is so present that you can actually see his smiling face. And then he says, I have found the joy. Oh, these are all um, joy unspeakable and full of glory. I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace, for it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Oh, the Savior's presence is it so near. I can see a smiling face, and it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue can tell. No tongue can explain the joy. You can only have to experience it for yourself. You know, we can give uh, uh, hints and metaphors and all the rest of it, but you finally have to uh, reach up and receive it for yourself in the end. And uh, I have found that, uh, that joy that the no tongue can explain, how the waves of glory, how, woo, boy, how the waves of glory roll. Yeah, I just definitely experienced that, all right. How the waves of glory roll. My, my Lord. Mm -mm. It is like a great or flowing well springing up within my soul. Mm, boy, I didn't, <clears throat> that one there was kind of new to me. Uh, you'd think I'd heard that. Isn't that the last? That's number four. That's the fourth verse. But I don't remember it. But it says, it's like a great or flowing well springing up within my soul. Oh, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. My, my, my. Woo! That's a marvelous song, too. My Lord. Mm -mm -mm. And, uh, and then we sung the Uncloudy Day, which we've explained that one before. Uh plenty of times, and the Glad Reunion Day, and uh, the Mansion on the Hilltop Mall, as we've explained all those before. It's a cloudy day. Yeah, here's the uncloudy day. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the, well, you know, it's just a land where no storm clouds arise, and a uh, land of a cloudless day, and you know, of course, that's representing clouds on your soul. And also, you know, that clouds represents the depression and the obsession and the and the uh, 
uh, feeling of being oppressed and all those other things that put clouds over your soul. And it's going to be in a land where none of that's going to happen again. And it's always going to be sunshine in our soul. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin. Then I found the sunlight in my soul within. Um, oh, and then... So they tell me of an unclad day with no storm cloud, right? And they tell me that he will he will be of a land where my friends have gone, and so we'll meet all of our friends again. And they tell me of a land where uh, far away, where there is a life uh, eternal uh, bloom, a rose in eternal bloom, uh, life in eternal bloom, uh, and. Uh, all those kinds of things, and they tell me of a king as only as a uh, how he sits on his throne is whiter than snow, and how my eyes will behold him and peace see the face of Jesus, and all those kinds of things. Uh, and, and, and that there's a city made of gold with with mansions uh, uh, like we have, uh, uh, and and so on. And then he then he has this um uh, uh, this 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 last verse was kind of precious, you know. It uh, kind of really struck me. So I stuck it down there. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there, and his smiles drive their sorrows all away. Um, they tell me that no tears will ever come again in that uh, uh, blessed land of an uncloudy day. And so, you know, he, he smiles on his children, takes all his sorrows all away. You know, everything... That would create a sorrow, everything that would create a heartache, it's all taken away. And so, um, and then, um, let's see, okay, I was, uh, so I should do it. So, it is now, okay, the Glad Reunion Day, uh, we explained that. There will be a happy meeting when we, um, there with all of our loved ones around the, uh, uh, in the mighty throne and on the hills of glory and we'll be there with them on that glad reunion day uh, there with all the uh, with all the happy an holy angels and loved ones to stay and so it'll be a glad reunion day and there within the holy city we'll sing and rejoice praising christ and then uh, telling him why we made him our ch our choice and uh and singing with song and with voice and and all of those kinds of things. But, so then it'll be a glad reunion day around the throne where we will be singing with a perfect voice and singing those songs without ever getting tired, without our voice ever giving out, without our mouth ever getting dry, without without ever, uh, any kind of our, our lungs ever giving out, uh, without our larynx ever not functioning properly, without all those things, any of those things that happen. Uh, it will have that good, clear voice to praise God with. And we'll be there with all of our loved ones that have gone on before. Everyone that we cared about and loved as well as all the others that will also be our, our soulmates. We'll all be there together and we'll all have perfect voices. Just imagine that if everybody had a perfect, harmonious voice and they were, if everybody... Oh, thousands, thousands and thousands and millions of millions, all with a perfect voice, uh, uh, hundreds of times greater than any, any of the most perfect voice you ever heard, singing a solo or singing a song. We're all around there together singing in a perfect voice what that's going to sound like. Oh, my goodness, my Lord. But it is now uh, a time for our 6 o'clock program, even though it's later than that now. Uh, but... Uh, we are going to go into our New Testament uh, exposition of our new, of the New Testament, and we are now uh, uh, in uh, Matthew, uh, right at the end of Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 22, uh, the last verse of, Ma of Matthew 22, getting ready to go into, into chapter 23. And uh, this is um, our daily exposition every day uh, about this time. Well, this is late. You know, it should be earlier. You know, it should be a lot earlier than this, but whatever time you're getting it, look for it at this time, and then eventually we're gonna we're gonna move it more back into the early, early afternoon and uh, more in the early afternoon, early uh, late afternoon, early evening time period. Uh, you know, around 6 p.m. and uh, 
So uh, 6, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time in the United States of America. And so we, uh, but we, uh, I am the uh, chief expositor and I'm always here every day, uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year, uh, teaching the Bible uh, at this particular period of time. This is our time. This is my time to teach the Bible. And as the chief expositor, I am going to expose it faithfully and with the grace of God. And I'm going to expose it as deep as He allows me to do. And we're going to, we, we are going to plod on and plod on and plow on and plow and plow faithfully and plow, and plow, uh, plow, uh, de- uh, plow faithfully, but plow deep and plow with, uh, in, with perseverance until we get through the rest of the of the New Testament. We're going to plow deep and we're going to plow straight. But we're going to keep plowing. The main idea is we're going to keep plowing. You know, no matter how much we accomplish, we're going to keep keep going until we finish the New Testament. And so now we are in um, Ephesians chapter, uh, the first chapter of, uh, the first verse of chapter 23. That's where we are, chapter uh, Matthew 23 and uh, verse 1. 23 and 1. Let's see, in 46, we were talking about, oh, yeah, we're, <coughs> we're, <coughs> we're uh, we were talking about where, the Pharisees and Sadducees had uh, finally had had enough. They had finally had enough of uh, Jesus being able to answer all their questions and outsmart them and everything, and that them being unable to uh, trap him in anything. <laughs> That's kind of funny. And they kept trying to trap him, kept trying to trap him, but every time he ended up. Every time they come and, and try to gang up on him and trap him, he ended up trapping them instead. <laughs> and so, uh, he, uh, uh, there, th- this last verse of chapter 22, it said, uh, after he made his last statement to, and, uh, to, tra- and, uh, to back to them, it said, and they just said, they just went away. They just silently went away and never asked him any more questions and never asked him any more questions for the rest of the time that he was here on earth. <laughs> <laughs> so they were pretty fed up with it, I guess. And, and they decided he knew more than they did. No man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forward ask him any more questions. And so we're going into a different from the story now starting to get interesting because we're getting close to the end of Matthew and we got five more chapters including this one it said then spake Jesus to the uh, multitudes and to his disciples saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat all therefore whatsoever they uh, bid you Observe their uh, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You know, so he said, uh, scribes and the Pharisees, uh, they sit in Moses' seat. He said they're sitting in the seat, but they're not doing. And they're saying things, but they're not doing as they say. So uh, he said, because they're sitting in Moses' seat, that you do uh, obey them, but don't. Uh, let's see what he said. Don't, he said, obey, obey the law, uh, but don't uh, follow their works. Let's see, observe. Yeah, they uh, whatever they uh, bid you to observe that observe and you know don't you know let them trap you by not observing something but do not ye after their works you know don't do uh don't do the things as far as uh you know love your neighbors yourself and and uh and the commandments that said uh you know love the lord thy god 
what would I like to heart someone, body and mind, and all those things that, uh, and uh, not committing adultery, not stealing, and not murdering, all the other kinds of things. Anything there in the Ten Commandments or, all, or anything in the spirit of the law, the spirit of love, and the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of wisdom, uh, don't follow, you know, don't, don't follow there what they, uh, what they, uh, the spirit that they are in, don't follow that spirit they're in, just to, just do the things that you're legally required to do, uh, and then after that, then, uh, look to God for the answers to all of the other questions. And so that's a, a good way to see that is, uh, it's like, you know, now if a law is bad, we have to follow it, but uh, we uh, have to uh, follow in our heart the law of God. So, for they, uh, for they bind, uh, will marry, let's see, it says he, he, for they will bind heavy branches They'll, hide, they'll bind heavy burdens and uh, and grievous uh, to be uh, born, and they lay uh, them on men's shoulders, but they, they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, you know, and so uh, they'll tell men, you know, other men to do all kinds of things, you know, the, uh, as far as uh, keeping the law of God and everything, and as far as observing uh, all of the uh, ceremonies perfectly and, and all those kinds of things. Uh, they will tell them to do all those, so many of those things, so many regulations and everything like that, and so many observances, and so many things they have to go through that they'll put upon them and everything and require them to do that. It'll become burdensome, but then they won't, uh, they won't lift a finger to do uh, any of those kinds of things themselves. And so they said, um, But all they, um, all their works they do uh, for to be seen of men, they, uh, they make broad their uh, phylacteries and enlarge the uh, borders of their garments, you know, might put on uh, something that is uh, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of pomp and ceremony and uh, something that is uh, full of pedantry and, uh, and full of, uh, of showiness, ornamentalism, put, putting on a lot of ornaments and a lot of showiness and, and a lot, a lot, you know, garnishing themselves with a lot of uh, decorating themselves with uh, those phylacteries uh, uh, that was... Uh, had the verses, had the commandments, had the laws and different things uh, that they would hang around their neck to show that they were observing all those. It's supposed to be an indication that they were observing all those laws and everything and that they were holier than everyone else. And, and so they would make them larger and larger so that everyone uh, everywhere could see that all these things that they had hanging on them that they were doing and that they were practicing and everything and that they were how they were were keeping the law and all this kind of thing. Uh, and, uh, but it was, it all became a matter of just showing this and, but within their own souls and their heart, they didn't have the love of God and they didn't have the real understanding or, and worship of God. And they didn't really, uh, have the, uh, the real understanding of who God was or any of those kinds of things. And so, uh, he's saying that pomp and ceremony doesn't cut it. You know, it has, that worship has to be, you have to worship God in spirit and in truth. So, yeah, this is getting really interesting. They say they, uh, you know, they put all those heavy uh, burdens in, on the other people. But all their works they do, uh, you know, they make those large languages and they, and they have, uh, they love the upper 
most rooms at the feast and the uh, the cheap seats in the uh, synagogues and all those kinds of things and gre- and uh, greetings in the uh, markets and uh, and to be called of men uh, rabbi you know and you know rabbi rabbi but but be uh, ye uh, not be not ye called rabbi for one is your master even Christ and all ye are brethren and call no man your father uh, upon the earth for one is your father and that is your father in heaven nevertheless be ye called man uh, be ye called uh, masters for one is your master even Christ so it's uh, let's see down a little bit. Uh, masters, for one is your master, even Christ. And why did he repeat that? Say, call no man master, for one is your, or one is your, he said, but be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brothers. And call no uh, m- no man your father for uh, upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven neither be ye called oh call no man master neither be ye called master for uh, for one is your master even Christ but uh, he that is greatest among you shall be your servant and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted and so he's going to he's going into his preaching again about uh, telling people oh yes you know be you know exercise humility and and be um Yeah, my, um, I don't need Google, you see, because my Father in Heaven knows everything. I've got my hot chocolate here, <laughs> and i got enough to last me the rest of the night in this large mug, and, and so I'm feeling right, as they say, feeling tight, feeling right, and <laughs> feeling out of sight, and oh, everything's great. Oh, what a wonderful day this has been. And how marvelous all this is to be able to study the Bible and be able to sing and all these kinds of things. It's just wonderful and marvelous. And uh, so, uh, but, you know, uh, we, uh, we are to uh, recognize that our Father in Heaven is our one Father. And that every man on earth, no matter what race, creed, or color, are all brothers in Christ and therefore equal under one father and if we make one uh, if we make one person father the father in heaven and then all the rest of them brothers you see then we're not placing people above one another and making them more equal than the others and so we don't make uh, we don't make a person upon this earth give them a designation of being above all of the others and uh, so uh See, you know, he's just telling you, exercise humility. Consider yourself below everyone else in humility, you know, in a cheerful way, in a loving way, in a make it mild, in a way that will uh, demonstrate that you understand that everyone else is equal to you. And then uh, let God take care of whether or not you're respected for that humility. And so... uh, and so we just have to be careful about it, about that particular thing. And 
So he says, um, Woe unto, uh, says that, but why, uh, but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither Suffer ye the or permit ye the them that are entering to get in. You know, they hinder others and they don't go in themselves, but they hinder, try to hinder others from going in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Oh, yes, he's laying it down and he's laying down the law on them. And uh, and for uh, uh, for your um, widows' houses, you know, for you devour widows' houses. And um, for a uh, pretense, make long prayers uh, there, uh, for ye shall receive the greatest damnation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, you know, he just he can't, he keeps on preaching to them for being hypocritical in all of their their actions and. That they're teaching other men to keep all this law and be perfect and all this, but then they're going in and they're, you know, uh, taking advantage of people for money and, uh, you know, doing every kind of unscrupulous and seemly thing, you know, and and then using the excuse that they they're able to do that because of their high position, they ought, should be able to get away with all these kinds of things, and and uh, that. Uh, that they're different than the than the uh, the more humble men below them, and so therefore they can get away with uh, skirting all the morals and the and the senses uh, the sense of of uh, transparency and the senses of uh, uh, the sense of being um, uh, uh, being totally have total honesty and character and forthrightness. If they can do as they please, more or less, because they're in a higher upper class and. Uh, but the people below them have to keep the letter of the law to the letter or else they're in bad, big trouble with the authorities and so on. And so that's how that all begins to. And he's just straightening all that out, you know, and doing a pretty good job of it. Woe unto you hypocrites and Pharisees for ye uh, compare men and and land to make one proselyte you know you will uh, compass compass a sea and land you'll go across sea and land to make one proselyte and when he is made ye make him twofold more the a uh, child of hell than yourselves. Woo! <laughs> Boy, he, he's getting into him, to that. <laughs> make a, you make a proselyte and then train him to be more devious than yourself. Oh! Oh, oh. oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> and go to all that trouble to gain that proselyte and then you... <laughs> And then you don't even train them right, you know, and bring them up right. But you, you make them a deep, more a more devious than yourself and, and encourage them in that. Encourage them to be even more corrupt than you yourself are. <laughs> Woo, my goodness. And then, you you know, it's an mm, amazing thing. Well, he says, uh, woe unto you. Ye blind guides. Oh, my goodness. Just listen to all this. The way he's just tearing into them. All this is going into widows' houses and making long prayers and receiving the greater, uh, you know, and, say, and then he's uh, doing all this going over, making these proselytes and making them more twofold. Uh, twice, as the, uh, twice as much a child of the devil as, as uh, themselves. And then he's uh, there. Uh, he keeps repeating that they're, they're blind guides and they're hypocrites and they're uh, uh, and all those kinds of things and and uh, 
but whosoever whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple he is a debtor woe unto you ye blind guides which say whosoever shall swear by the uh, temple it is uh, nothing but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple of the temple uh, he is a debtor hmm. so you know uh, swear by the temple he uh, it is nothing so they excuse swearing by the temple but they wouldn't excuse swearing by the uh, by the gold of the temple or they would say in order to prove a point or in order for the debtor to know that he was going to meet his dead I guess would say swear by the gold of the temple or something like that I, I, I don't get that completely what they mean but they just in other words well, basically what he was saying was that they would go to all, through all these different kind of contrivances, you know, just to really skirt the spirit of the law and just make it work for their own advantage rather than it wouldn't, it would, to not really consider what was the advantage of the, of the common people or the country or anything else uh, or of God or, or anything, but what was to be uh, to the most advantage to them and whatever was most advantage, advantage to them and then that's how they would bend all of the, the different laws that they, uh, you know, to meet that, uh, uh, to meet th that need of having everything uh, be more profitable to the, they themselves or more convenient to they themselves and be where, like he said, they could be in a position where they would never have to lift a finger to do anything but that, you know, everybody, they could put all this off on everybody else that's beneath them. You know, and so they, they just become just, in other words, just just lazy and and uh, uh, and just decre uh, just uh, uh, corrupt, lazy and corrupt and dishonest and without a, a real sense of character or honesty or integrity. Okay, so because with honesty and integrity, they wouldn't have done all those things that what he's telling about. And so it says. Uh, Woe to you, uh, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, uh, for ye, let's see, where was he at? He swear by this. Uh, ye fools and blind, uh, and now he's calling them fools and blind. See, he just keeps up in the ante, uh, he keeps uh, ratcheting it up. Uh, ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold which is greater the gold or the temple which sanctifies the gold the gold is sanctified because it's in the temple not because it's gold and whosoever shall swear uh, by the altar it is nothing but whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it he is guilty <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness and all these contrivances you know that gift that was upon it you know evidently was go supposed to be going to them and you know to the, uh, the blind leaders there and so they uh, <laughs> and they considered that gift more important than the altar itself you know oh that kind of that kind of strikes home in a way to people who uh, uh, care more about Taking in huge amounts of money into a uh, to a church organization, something they do about maintaining the altars of prayer and encouraging people to pray at the altar, which should be the foremost thing that they should be concentrating on is encouraging people to pray and having altars available and everything like that. But instead, they're concentrating more upon uh, you know the the contributions and uh, raking in a lot of money and all that kind of thing. You know. Uh, not your normal church, but, you know, there's organizations that are somewhat like that. And then a few churches here and there that, that might be like that. But it wouldn't be your, your normal churches. But 
It does happen in a number of places in a number of organizations. And that starter tells you about that. He said that the altar is more important than the gift that is upon it. So I say, man, for you, leader, suffering, and then when he said, Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall never live a valley. Okay. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, you know, the gift of the subordinate, ye fools and blind, for what is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And when shall whosoever shall swear by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. If you swear by the temple, you're swearing by him that dwelling being God and, and he that that shall swear by He that shall swear by uh, okay. that should be right. He that shall swear by heaven sweareth by the uh, throne of God and by him that sitteth. There it is. Woe unto you then, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tri uh, tribute of mint, for you pay a tithe of mint and uh, you pay tribute of mint and anine and and camper. Uh, Cumin, oh, uh, cumin, oh, okay. I probably pay a tribute of mint and anine uh, and, uh, and cumin and have committed the weighty matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith there all ye to have done and not to leave the others undone the other undone you know thinking about the things like the like love and mercy and and uh, faith and all those things are the ones things that are are the most important is that's the thing to be teaching and and delving into and dealing with uh, rather than all these uh, Less weighty matters, you know, like the gift upon the altar and all of these other uh, swearing by the temple or not swearing by the temple and all these different kinds of things like this. And then forgetting to have mercy and forgetting to have love for the people and forgetting, you know, the things that really make up the faith and make up the real uh, holiness of God. Forgetting the holiness of God and getting caught up in all of the... the uh, of the ceremony, the pomp and the ceremony, and doing everything according to that precise order, uh, and uh, doing things to more to the advantage of uh, uh, advantages of the leaders of the temple and everything than what it would be to the people that come there to worship. You know, so that's uh, so then they're hypocrites, you know, and so because of uh, uh, you know they're not living up to what God really intended for the temple to be. So. Uh, it says, uh, "Be thou." So uh, let's see, Pharisees and hypocrites outside of the camp, blind, uh, blind guides. Well, let's see, more than you have to minimize that man. Ye blind guides, which uh, strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, 
for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are, you know, uh, full of extortion and ex and then uh, ex uh, and excess, full of extortion and excess, and so. Uh, these blind Pharisees cleans, cleans up, uh, cleans first that which is within uh, the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. Uh-huh. Okay, and so woe unto you, scribes and, and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchers, <laughs> which indeed appear uh, beautiful on the outside, you know, outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. You know, and so they clean up on the outside, but the inside they stink. <laughs> They're stinkers inside, <laughs> even though they, they put on a good outward appearance, and really inside they're just stinkers. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh boy, I mean, is he? I didn't realize he tore into them quite so much. He just really tore. He just really tears into all of those leaders of the temple and all of the scribes and Pharisees and just really lays down the how just how far they've gotten away from the real intent of what in God intended that uh, temple and that synagogue, synagogue and all to actually be there far, just how far they've gotten away from all that. You know, he really lays down and in, lays into them about that and, um, and shows them that they, you know, they have, they've got along, they've got to, well, to get, they really need to come to the place of repenting and, uh, you know, accepting the gospel and all those kinds of things. And so, uh, uh, because it's evident, according to the, the things that they're doing, that they need the gospel message. And even so, ye also, you know, you said they outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy, and iniquity. Woo! They're full of hypocrisy and, and sin, iniquity. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the uh, prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Uh, they say they build the tombs of the of the uh, prophets, but then they just garnish the sepulchers of the uh, of the righteous. And uh, it's pretty heavy stuff. And say if if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in their blood of, of the blood of the prophets. You know, that they if they were living back then, you know, they uh, they wouldn't have persecuted the prophets and and partaken in the killing of the prophets the way some of the ones uh, that he was referring to the ones that back there, you know, in the Old Testament, where they, you know, some of the prophets were persecuted and killed and so forth. And they said, well, they, they felt like they were holy, uh, so holy, the, the scribes and Pharisees did, that they would say, they would know, they would just know that if they were back there, that they would not have partake in, partaken in any of that, that they would have respected all the prophets. 
But I think he's about to say, well, if you would respect them, then why aren't you respecting uh, the ones, uh, you know, that are, you know, like John the Baptist and so forth that was uh, was there uh, now, uh, or that had been there recently before baptizing people and everything. And I think, it's, I think maybe that might be what he's going to say. Or the prophets respect them for uh, predicting the coming of the Messiah you know, in the coming of Christ and and, pre uh, and predicting and looking forward to Christ and everything. And so then, in other words, respect the prophets enough to realize that Jesus is the Messiah. So, so he said, um, Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Oh man, I tell you why that's a tremendous sermon. <laughs> Woo! Ye serpents. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, well, I, well, yeah, I guess I, anyway, I wondered where that was. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It mentioned that earlier, too. Uh, ye, uh, I think it was chapter 12. Uh, ye serpents, ye, gen uh, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Oh, 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 oh my goodness. It, I didn't realize all this was in here. <laughs> Woo! How did I miss that in my readings of, the, uh, of Matthew before? I, oh, man. I, of course, I spent most of my study in, you know, the books of Paul, you know, and, and uh, you know, Peter and John and Paul and those, the epistles. And, uh, but, uh, man, I'll tell you what, he had really... He, he really is preaching one heck of a sermon. I mean, it's just, I mean, he's really tearing into it. He said, you generation of vipers. I mean, when you stop and you think about what that is, a gen, uh, you know, uh, that's um, vipers are like um, poisonous, uh, uh, poisonous like um, either poisonous spiders or scorpions or poisonous snakes or something like that, you know, uh, I'd have to look up the exact one that they were, but they're one of the two, and whichever they are, they're the poisonous ones. The most poisonous ones, uh, most poisonous type of scorpions or, or uh, most poisonous types of spiders or snakes, that, that's, that, that's the vipers. Uh, and, uh, and the generation, he calling them a generation of vipers, a generation of, of poisoned people. A poison, those that will put poison into others, and, and uh, you know, without a thought, ye serpent. Well, yeah, now here's the serpents. Yeah, he said first the snakes, the serpents, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye uh, escape the damnation of hell? You know, if you are so unscrupulous and you're so dishonest and you're so hypocritical and. Uh, and you're lying, and you're thieving, and uh, 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 and uh, you're uh, twisting the, the law to suit yourself, and and all these kind of things, and committing all these uh, corrupt activities, uh, and then doing it in the name of God. Uh, uh, how can you escape then being, uh, you know, uh, going into into damnation and condemnation? Uh, how can you how can you uh, escape being condemned for that? Oh my 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 my. Mm -mm. That is amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. And I'm going to have to stop and pray. Uh, give the prayer because I don't want to leave the prayer out. But this is so interesting, I hate to stop with it. Okay, so what is all this other stuff about? Okay, behold, I send unto you prophets. Wherefore I send unto you prophets. And wise men and scribes and some of them ye shall kill and let's see 
that was uh, a prophecy there. And some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. That, uh, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed up upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of of uh, Zebulun, uh, of Zacharias to the blood of Zacharias son of Baraki Baraki Barakis uh, and uh, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Oh my goodness. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that, that, uh, that which killeth the prophets, and uh, stoneth them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not behold your house in is left unto you desolate. Woo! For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Whoa, my, my. You know, what <laughs> you were thinking, not only they were going to have to say, Blessed be his head, come to heaven, but that, you know, he, uh, is not, I'm not going to bother with you until you understand, you know, what's going on a little more and, uh, and understand who it is that is here and what I am here to do and, and uh, understand it. He said, uh, He's going to just uh, work with other people, and but then one day they will have to be admit that he is the uh, he is the one that is uh, that has a name that is blessed. Uh, that that uh, that they have to say, "Blessed is he that came with, cometh in in the name of the Lord," and understand who he was and his deity, and uh, and the fact that he was born of a virgin, and the fact that he was the, was the only begotten Son of God, and so forth and so on like that. They would have to. I have to eventually come to understand all of that. Oh, yes. My, my, my. Good hot chocolate. Oh, yes. Barely I say unto you, I see. So we're in, uh, so now we're starting chapter 24. So, uh, as Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him far to show him the buildings of the temple and Jesus said unto them see ye not all these things verily I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Oh, he says the temple is just going to come apart, totally apart, you know, down to the very stones which make it up, the very, uh, the very, every little, every stone that is within the temple shall separate and all separate and fall down into, into separate stones. And then even those stones, you know, would, would fall apart. And, you know, he said, <laughs> and so, you know, the temple was going to be just utterly desolate, not utterly destroyed, you know, because of the, you know, hypocrisy and the, and the unwillingness to accept the Messiah and all those kinds of things. And, you know, the scribe, the, the generation of vipers and poet that were, you know, engaging in their poisonous, and unscrupulous activities and all those things, it was going to cause the temple to be De, uh, to be uh, demolished down into the single stones and uh, even smaller. And so he said, uh, uh, what did he say about the uh, unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon 
another. Yeah. Okay. So it's into the separate stones. You know, this be 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 rumble and all. Every one of the stones will be down on the ground level, and that shall not be uh, you know uh, torn down, thrown down. I'll be thrown down, and as he and as he sat upon the uh, Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying okay so oh okay he had already said Jesus went out and and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him far to show him the building oh he was on the Mount of Olives to see those buildings point out those buildings and well he had, I guess he had already gone to the Mount of Olives they came to him to show him the building and Jesus said unto them you know, he, you know, he told them then that the temple would be destroyed. You know, he said this temple will be be destroyed in three days. I'll raise it up again because he was going to replace that temple which was demolished with the temple of his body. You know, and he was going to become the the, the temple in the in the future, and uh, and he would be the temple that would be raised in th in three days and they thought he meant he was going to put all those stones back together in three days but he was going to rise from the dead in three days whoa my 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 boy i mean he tore into those crowds of pharisees so whoo <laughs> i'll be thinking about that a, a while he said, and so he said uh mm -mm -mm, my 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 uh now he was on the mount of olives and he said uh the disciples uh, came in the uh, into him privately, and so they were going. They want to ask, you know, about things about the future and everything like that. And um, let's see, would this be that was twenty four? I guess. Uh, Yeah, he came to him privately and said, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come to my uh, shall come to my come in my name saying i am christ and shall deceive many and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye not be troubled for all these things have to come to pass must come to pass but the end is not yet for, for uh, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be uh, famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of the uh, sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted uh, and shall uh, kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be, uh, be <coughs> but shall many should be offended and shall Betray one another and shall hate one another. Ooh, whoa. And many false prophets shall arise and, and uh, shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold. Wax cold. Grow cold, wax cold. Woo! Well, on that lovely note, <laughs> I better stop and pray. Woo! <laughs>
Oh my goodness. So I don't have time to get this put up for peace sake. Oh my goodness. My, my, my. Oh, precious Jesus. Thank you so much, Father. Father, I thank you so much for the reading of that word. <clears throat> oh, Father, I just thank you for all the lessons that he's teaching us. And teaching us about uh, this, the, all of this hatred and, 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 uh, and all of this iniquity. And teaching us, dear God, about deception and about hypocrisy and all these kinds of things. And uh, how we can avoid that and how we can have the right attitude towards you. And oh, dear God, and how we can have love in our heart and peace and prosperity and so on uh, in a... Uh, in, in, uh, and following Jesus Christ and, and uh, listening to his wisdom and following his wisdom that we will have an understanding and we'll have an ability to guide ourselves safely through through the power of Jesus. <clears throat> and Lord, I just thank you, dear God, for, uh, for the wisdom of the word and for the power of the word and what it tells us. And now I pray, dear God, if there been anybody sick, dear God, I just thank you that you will heal us. Uh, I just pray in the name of the Holy Son Jesus that you would raise them up from any of, any of their sicknesses and any of their diseases, anything that is uh, uh, holding them uh, down uh, from uh, being uh, in full energy and vigor <clears throat> to be able to uh, praise your name with power and strength and uh, and shout and praise God and dance in the Spirit and all those things. And I pray now that there be anyone that has uh, any uh, a form of cancer. Father, I just pray you would heal their cancer <clears throat> now in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. <clears throat> heal uh, any kind of um, tumor that they might have. Oh, dear Father. Yeah, any tumor anywhere in the body. <clears throat> And Father, <clears throat> I just pray, dear Jesus, that if anyone has a tumor <clears throat> underneath their uh, skull or in their brain or on their brain or in their brain, <clears throat> Father, that you would just go in with our surgical angels, just send our surgical angels to just completely uh, 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 remove, surgically remove Dear God, remove it by your own divine surgery and your own divine healing power. Remove it by the power of your love and the power of your omnipotence and omnipresence. Dear God, that you would shed your love into those diseases and dear God, outshine them and cause them to wither away and be removed and be cast into the sea, never to be remembered again. And Lord, I just pray, dear God, that you just take out all of those things that are interfering with people's thought and people with people's uh, ability to think clearly of all their their ability of their mind to work work well and Lord all of the, anything that would interfere with the memory anything that would appear uh, cause pain or headaches or anything that you would would just begin to oh dear God that you would just heal that totally and harmonize that heart and now we pray Father dear God that you will heal people of any kind of lung problems any kind of emphysema. Sema <clears throat> and any kind of pneumonia or flu bug <coughs> or virus bug. Oh dear God, any kind of a problem with a uh, with COVID nineteen any any kind of uh, allergy or things like that. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> All right. Well, in the name of Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> praise God. Praise God. And thank you, dear Jesus. Oh, thank you, dear Father. Mm -mm -mm. Glory to God. Praise Jesus. Praise Him. Oh, dear God, we just thank you and we praise you, dear God, in the name of thy, uh, of thy Holy Son, Jesus, just bless us and keeps us, dear God. Oh, dear Father. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Lord. Yep. And bless all of those people 
Oh, dear God. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, all the people with bronchial problems, dear God, and with problems with their, uh, 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 with asthma or problems with breathing in any way, any kind of inflammation or infection or anything within their, uh, uh, within their lungs. And Lord, just protect those people. Dear Father, oh, my dear Lord, that have, um, uh, that, uh, those that uh, have been, have destruction of their lungs due to smoking, Lord, that you would just heal them now of all of those uh, uh, of that uh, 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 cravings for nicotine, that you might be able to restore their lungs. Uh, oh, dear God, that they would have full breathing capacity. And, uh, oh, dear God, now that you just protect and bless everybody with diabetes, dear God, that you would just heal them and balance their blood sugar. Oh, dear God, and balance all their hormones, and balance the endocrine system and their pancreal function. Dear God, it'll all function perfectly, and their kidneys will function perfectly. Uh, purposely, uh, 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 and dear God, uh, perfectly, uh, perfect harmony in all of their organs. And dear God, I just pray, dear God, Lord, now that you did touch people in their uh, in their liver, dear God, uh, that um, they would be healed of all hepatitis and all cirrhosis and all pain. Oh, dear God, dear God, anything caused by uh, by uh, alcohol, Lord, if they would lay down that bottle and never come back to it again. And Lord, if they would lay down their, uh, oh, dear Father, mm -mm -mm. Lay down their pack of cigarettes and not have to return to them again. Lay down all the drugs. And Lord, I be pray that you would heal people of all arthritic pain, all all pain in their joints. In the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, heal people of any kind of a, a problem with a, with rheumatoid arthritis or joint pain of any, of any kind. And dear God, or inflammation of any kind. Of Lord, dear God, pray that you heal people of all bone problems, all osteoporosis. Dear God, that they would have good strong bones, that they can get up and dance in the spirit. Oh, dear God, have a good structure to stand upon with good firm joints and bless them in their knees and in their hips and in their joints and dear God uh, uh, any kind of a hip joints or, or, or broke hip or anything like that that, that would be healed uh, perfectly and in perfect ordering and quickly and Lord dear God now they should pray oh dear God that uh, people would uh, that by uh, that you would heal muscle sclerosis and and uh, and spinal meningitis, dear God, in the name of the Holy Son Jesus. And Lord, we just pray that you would touch people, oh Lord, uh, and dear God, in, in their spinal columns, uh, that there won't be any problem with any of their discs, won't be any pinched nerves, won't be any sciatic uh, sciatic nerve pain, there won't be any kind of problem with their vertebrae or anything like that, dear God. I pray that you to heal them of back pain of every kind, and especially in their lower back. And dear God, pray. oh Father, I just pray, dear God, that you heal people of uh, of scabies and all. All other ashes and sour of the skin and all dear God that heal people uh, of shingles and, and Father in the name of Jesus Lord give people perfect uh, good, perfect strong muscles and in, in their heart per, per, perfectly good strong um, heart muscle the last many years and let that uh, give them a strong ticker that'll be they'll tick right on with great uh, uh, with good harmony and all of the uh, uh, the electrical forms and, and dear God now that you just cause it. Uh, Dear, dear Father, for uh, the uh, relief of any kind of hypertension or hypotension, Lord, that the blood flow would flow perfectly in the harmony. And Lord, that God, you just uh, remove all plaque from and all hardening of the arteries, dear God, and everything from the coronary uh, vessels, dear God, and cause a, a strong heart. And Lord, I pray that, dear God, in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, dear God, that you would touch touch people, oh, dear God, uh, and heal them in any kind of leukemia or any kind of problem with them. With a bone marrow or anything like that, Lord, they got you just give them, give them a perfect balance in all of their blood course parcels and all everything and white, white, red, and so forth. And dear God, let's pray now that you would, oh dear God, uh, uh, just uh, uh, relieve people. We pray that you'd relieve people of all depression and all obsession, dear Father, and all, uh, uh, all oppression and obsession and. And feeling of uh, being obsessed that they that they have some kind of obsession that they can't get along without any of things of this life, any kind of bad habit or anything. And Lord, just relieve them of that. Lift them up to that high mountain of joy. Lord, relieve the people of all oppression, dear God. Uh, and feeling of being oppressed by either relationships or relatives or groups or status groups or, or anything, government or anything else, that they will not feel oppressed and they will realize that we are now have victory in Jesus. And Lord, we, we're way above our, any sense of being victims or any sense of being a, uh, oppressed in any way. But because we're total victors, we have overcome. We have overcome in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. And Lord, we are in that high mountain of joy with you now overcoming it all. And Lord, dear God, now that you would relieve people of all depression and all sense of every low feeling, and every blues feeling. And Lord, that you would just heal them of every sense of uh, being isolated, being left out, being a uh, 
uh, lonely or being fearful or being anxious or any, any kind of a feeling of uh, restlessness and, and Lord, any kind of feeling of being, uh, uh, oh dear God, being uh, uh, lonely or fearful or afraid. And Lord, dear God, now that you just lift them above all of that and all the pre of, of all the oppression that they may not return to depression again and never again. And Lord, to be raised up to the high mountain of joy where they will have that great joy uh, uh, that uh, living for you that is uh, Oh, that joy is a thousand times greater than any earthly joy they can get. And Lord, if they would be healed, people will be healed of all, uh, all addictions to crack and addictions to cocaine, addictions to heroin, dear God, to fentanyl, dear God, to, uh, to, uh, amphetamine, uh, uh, methamphetamine, dear God, and, uh, barbiturates, and phenobarbital, and oxycontin, and dear God, all those drugs, dear God, that they, that you would relieve them of that and heal their physical addiction, and dear God, and heal them, dear God, of the uh, mental and emotional problems. And dear God, they just pray that you just lift them up to a high mountain of, of joy. For before you, dear God, now, oh, dear God, that they can receive that joy and realize that power and that strength that you can give them, that bim and the bigger that, is, uh, that, uh, that would give them a joy uh, that is uh, thousands of times greater than any kind of rush or any kind of, uh, oh, dear God, any kind of buzz or any kind of euphoria or any kind of high feeling that they could ever hopefully get from ever, hope to get from any kind of drug that your joy is a thousand times greater and they will realize that and never have to go back to the drugs again. Oh, dear God, now we just pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you would help uh, uh, all of our, our missionaries, dear God. Oh, Father that you would bless them with a great evangelistic uh, uh, passion, and Lord, that you would just bless them, dear God, and protect them in every way from any kind of harm from themselves and their family, that they can return home safely. Oh, dear God, and then on their farm fields there, that they will have the support they need. They'll have plenty of support. They'll have uh, all, uh, plenty of, uh, of love for the lost and reaching and, and a great outreach, dear God, that we pray now that they will be uh, rewarded for everything they're doing. And Lord, we pray now, that you, dear Father, that you would bless all of our pastors and our leaders of our churches and our teachers and uh dear god all of our social pastors and assistant pastors dear god oh dear god that you just to touch all of our choir all of our music directors choir directors dear god and and all of our Sunday school teachers and and uh, elders and deacons dear god that they would have a great passion for christ a great uh, a great drive for revival a great uh, uh feeling of a uh, uh a prayer, a fervent prayer, and Lord, they just give them an evangelistic, uh, uh, evangelistic passion, dear God, and the wisdom and understanding to, to teach. And Lord, I would pray, dear God, for all of our, uh, all of our police officers, just to protect them in every way from any kind of harm to themselves or their family, that they may have a rewarding career and as a police officer and come to the end of it, realize they've done my wonderful things for the law and order in this country. And Lord, they'll be protected from any kind of. Uh, of any kind of uh, aggression or or uh, destru uh, destructive activity. And Lord, now we pray in the name of the Holy Spirit, you should protect all of, of our servicemen, all of our men and women in the Army, Navy, uh, uh, Coast Guard, Air Force, uh, Marines, and, uh, and Space Force, and all of our, uh, that you would uh, protect them against harm by, to themselves or their family, that they might uh, exercise uh, uh, their duties with wisdom and understanding and with protection by the power of God that they may return home safely to the Lord and live out their career and have a rewarding career and, and be honored and and and, and, uh, and uh, feel for, uh, uh, will be fulfilled by the fact that they've done a wonderful service for the country. And Lord, now we pray for all of our all of our leaders of our country, dear God, all of our congressmen and all of our governors and, and uh, city and state leaders and all dear God and we just pray that you would just give wisdom uh, to lead this country, uh, Lord, to our leaders, that they would be able to lead this country into uh, the, uh, uh, a time of a uh, return to a time, dear God, that they would lead us into, uh, have the wisdom to lead toward a great uh, uh, ability of honesty and integrity and character and, uh, uh, and transparency, dear God, that uh, they would see the wisdom of that and they would see the wisdom of, uh, of leading people into having gra a, a bit more gratitude for the country and more appreciation for the blood that was shed for the country, more appreciation for the true freedoms and liberties of this country, that they would have the leadership ability to stand up and, 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 uh, and be a real a leader in leading people toward that direction of appreciation of what has been accomplished by the, by the United States, this country. Oh, dear God, and, and we just pray, dear God, now that uh, that you would bless all of our governors and all of, of our states that they'd be able to lead their respective states in honesty and integrity and, and uh, forthrightness, dear God, they'd be able to lead uh, and with transparency and with character and integrity. And, all, and Lord, all of our city and state and, and uh and uh, county and, and state leaders, dear God, that they would be able to lead uh, toward a time of, of great honesty and character in all of our government officials in every capacity. And Lord, now we pray, dear God, uh, Lord, that you would just bless them. Uh, 
all of the performers and ranchers just bless all of their livestock, dear God, uh, and just protect their livestock, protect their farm, their ranches, especially down south there from vandalism of their barns or of their houses or coming in their houses or, or vandalizing any of their equipment. And Lord, dear God, that you just protect them against that and give them a great, uh, uh, great prices on all their livestock. And, and Lord, give them great prosperity of every kind. And we pray now, dear God, that you just bless all of our farmers with, with a great harvest this year, dear God. And Lord, dear God, that they would be, uh, uh, that they would be uh, an abundance and dear God, that they would be prosperous in every way and protected in every way. And Lord, dear God, now we pray for all of our, every one of our pets and everything, Lord, that you just protect them and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, provide them uh, what they need. And dear God, we just protect them against uh, being attacked by wild animals or against the smaller ones being attacked by the, uh, uh, the larger ones. And, and oh, Father, I just pray in the name of thy Holy Son, Jesus, that you would find all of those uh, the animals that are homeless, you would find them forever homes and loving uh, homes and a heavenly atmosphere with great, uh, with plenty of good food and plenty of places to play, plenty of places to enjoy their life. Dear God, to have a happy life, Lord, with a good family. And Lord, dear God, we just pray, dear God, that, you ha that they would uh, be protected in that way. And Lord, we pray now, dear God, that you just protect us and, and give us a wonderful evening, a wonderful night, night's rest. And Lord, dear God, it helps us to be uh, prepared then for a wonderful day of work tomorrow and a day of, of service to you. And Lord, dear God, just keep us well, keep us happy, keep us in our service. All the hush, I thank you, dear God, now that you would just protect us, dear God, and, and, uh, and give us wisdom and understanding, but give us a blessed remainder of the evening and a blessed remainder of the night. And Lord, that you would give us a, 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 a restful sleep, a wonderful sleep, a peaceful sleep. We ask all these things in the name of thy blessed Holy Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, dear Father, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.